Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. So what does food mean to you? Well, join me this week. I have three special guests, and you know, the holidays are coming up, so we are doing a segment. Let's see, we have Ashley Shoring from Confessions of a Grocery Addict, who is a regular on the show. She helps us with some money-saving tips, and today she's going to help us with how to save money when you are hosting a holiday event. And let's see, Alina Sabrina, who is a travel expert. She's a Gen X travel expert, and she's going to help us with some tips on making holidays or making holiday travel stress-free. And Hatelva Savada, she wrote a book on Indian cooking, and she's going to share with us some Indian desserts. So join me with my special guests. And before we get started on our interviews, I wanted to share some tips again on holiday travel that Stephanie from TripShepherd.com has shared with us. So she recommends as popular holiday destinations, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, to escape the winter chill with warm beaches, canal cruises, and a laid back holiday vibe. Holiday lights along the waterfront and outdoor dining at Los Alas Boulevard. Toronto, Ontario. She says this cosmopolitan city sparkles with holiday lights, skating rinks, and festive markets. The distillery district's Christmas market and and skating at Nathan Phillips Square. Next, she has Montreal, Quebec, a winter wonderland with European charm. Think cozy cafes, cobblestone streets, and incredible holiday decor. Old Montreal's Christmas Market and Poutine by a Roaring Fire. But my favorite, favorite place for Christmas in the whole world is Quebec City, Quebec. I don't think there's any other city that does Christmas like Quebec City, Quebec. It is definitely a winter wonderland with European charm. If you've never been there during Christmas and you can get there during Christmas, there's nothing like it. And next, Stephanie says that Halifax, Nova Scotia is a quaint and cozy maritime vibe with plenty of festive cheer, holiday concerts, scenic coastal drives, and a lobster dinner to celebrate the season. Wow, that sounds delicious. Sedona, Arizona is a peaceful retreat among stunning red rock landscapes, perfect for a low-key rejuvenating holiday, stargazing, and enjoying the Tlacopake Hopefully I said that correctly. Arts and Shopping Villages Festive Lights. Memphis, Tennessee is a soulful holiday destination with music, history, and southern charm. Graceland's holiday displays and Beale Street's live music scene. And Cincinnati, Ohio is a surprising gem with a rich mix of history and holiday cheer. The Cincinnati Zoo's Festival of Lights and the historic Fountain Square Ice Rink. And here are Stephanie's top tips for stress-free holiday travel. And again, Stephanie's from uh, tripshepherd.com. So she says to book early and stay flexible, lock in flights, accommodations, and car rentals as soon as possible. Holiday travel demand is high and prices skyrocket closer to departure. Choose flexible options so you can adjust plans without penalties if needed. Pack light and smart. Stick to carry-on luggage to avoid delays at baggage claims. Use packing cubes for organization and bring versatile layers for destinations like Halifax or Montreal where winter can be unpredictable. And um, and if you're needing a smart way to pack the Conmigo Ulti travel bag, which is going to be in this week's holiday guide, is the perfect solution for holiday travel. And for my listeners, if you put in the code Maria Show you will get a 20% discount off of the Conmigo bag. Plan around crowds. Travel midweek on a few days before peak holidays. Early morning flights are less likely to face delays. Arrive at the airport early and use apps like TSA PreCheck 
or CLEAR, that's C-L-E-A-R, to speed up security. Research local events in advance. That is definitely a great tip. Look up holiday markets, parades, or seasonal festivals at your destination and book tickets early to avoid missing out. Choose accommodation accommodations wisely. For relaxation, opt for places with amenities like on-site restaurants or cozy fireplaces, perfect for Sedona or Halifax stays. In cities like Fort Lauderdale, beachfront hotels are ideal for soaking up some stress-free sunshine. Wow, that sounds so relaxing. Travel insurance is key because unexpected weather delays or cancellations are common during the holidays. Travel insurance offers peace of mind. Stay healthy on the go. Pack healthy snacks. Stay hydrated and allow yourself some downtime to avoid burnout while traveling. And Drink Path is a great bottled water that was in our holiday guide number eight. That's a great way to stay hydrated. Some tips for holiday travel. And I just wanted to share with you some of the wonderful products. You know, I've been researching products for the holiday guides. And we'll be doing these um, throughout November and December. But here are some more products that I found this week. for They're perfect for holiday gifts or for your, your holiday table. So my... The first product, and I just mentioned it, is perfect for stress-free holiday travel. It's the Conmigo Ulti Travel Bag. And again, my listeners will get 20% off if you use the code Maria Show. The next product is Langer Farms Apple Butter and Apple Honey. So yummy. Such great products for your holiday table or they they even make a great gourmet food gift for that foodie in your life and for that fur baby in your life you know your your dog or cat multi pet makes these adorable lamb chop stuffed animals with squeakies inside i know my sweetie bear loves them so multi pet is a great product for your fur baby a great product to get for christmas a christmas present for your fur baby and uh, i'll be mentioning some more products at the end of the show stay with me And uh, my special guest today is Hetal Basavada. She wrote a really interesting book on Indian desserts, which not a lot of us, including myself, know about. And you know, it's the holiday time. So there are so many holidays coming up. So it's always nice to know um, an interesting or a different dessert to do instead of like the, you know, traditional same things you do all the time. But um, yes, so, and the book is called Hetal, it's called Daisy bakes right yes it's called they see bakes it came out earlier october 15th this year you can find it on amazon and a ton of other bookstores your local so bookstores tell, obviously yes so tell us what that title means i know you explained it to me but uh tell us what that title means yeah so they see is another term that's used to describe people from south asia so they see uh-huh. literally means of the land uh-huh. and it's used to describe people from <laughs> india pakistan bangladesh and sri lanka oh very interesting and um how did you come up with the idea to do this cookbook so this is my second cookbook my first cookbook was called milk and cardamom which i came out in 2018 uh-huh. well 2019 i wrote it in 2018 but right. um, that was a lot of fusion Indian American desserts, trying to fuse a lot of my Indian background with a lot of the desserts I grew up eating in Jersey. I grew up in New Jersey. Uh-huh. Um, in this book, I wanted to marry a lot of cookies and cakes and American European style desserts uh-huh. with the decor of India. I wanted to take inspiration from handicrafts and textiles and art and cultural references from India uh-huh. and apply them to bakes. So I have, you know, cakes decorated to 
to look like mirror work or um, desserts that are decorated to look like various textiles and fabrics from India. Uh -huh. And I took a lot of visual inspiration from my culture and applied that to a lot of American and Indian bakes. And then also added a lot of flavors in like cardamom and saffron and pistachio and, you know, various nuts that are very commonly found in Indian desserts and applied them into the dessert and to these American European bakes. So what's like, what is a, tr can you pick what would be kind of the most popular, maybe traditional Indian dessert that, uh, somebody might find I, i'm sure there are many but like you know in america we have yes. apple pie so what would be a traditional um indian dessert Sweet. yes so one of the probably the most popular that you can find at probably every restaurant indian restaurant in the u.s is gajar kahalva uh -huh. that literally means um carrot sweet so it's carrots that are shredded and then cooked uh -huh. down in a little bit of ghee and milk until the milk evaporates and all you're left is with the milk fat and right you cook it until the milk fat caramelizes uh -huh. So it has this like gorgeous, nutty, caramely flavor. And then you uh -huh. add sugar, mm -hmm. um, cashews and raisins to it. And then it's served almost like a pudding. Pudding. Uh-huh. Um, and it's absolutely just delicious. And Sounds I do a, like a, a blondie with it. So, you know, I'll toast brown butter with some milk powder. And then I, you know, shred some um, carrots and make a blondie, almost like a cross between a carrot cake, blondie right. and a gajar kahoa. Oh, that sounds really, really delicious. Wow. That sounds good. It sounds good. And it sounds like something that, you know, they're not difficult ingredients for someone to find. And I don't think it would be something difficult for someone that maybe is just like a home cook to prepare, right? It sounds like it's an easier, an easier dessert to do. Mm -hmm. And um is there like what so we you know we have christmas storing now what what is i know there's diwala because we they yes. just declared it a holiday in pennsylvania so but i understand and unfortunately i don't know a whole lot about it but mm -hmm. is that like a week-long celebration it is it's a week-long celebration so what are the traditional types of desserts that one might yeah, served during that holiday. So Diwali is five days and it culminates with four holidays culminating in Diwali, which is our new year. Uh -huh. um, and during that time, you'll see dessert like... Um, Weirdly enough, I grew up with Italian cookies because I grew up being in North Jersey, Jersey I was surrounded yes. by Italian bakeries. Yes. But um, we grew up, butter cookies are a very common thing that are served during Diwali. Uh -huh. And the closest thing we had to our traditional Indian butter cookies, which we call nan katai, uh -huh. or Italian <laughs> Italian butter cookies. Uh -huh. um, but the more traditional things you'll find is we have a dessert called gaju katli. It's a cashew fudge. It's basically um, sugar that's cooked till it's a softball stage. And then you uh -huh. mix it with ground cashew flour uh -huh. and then set it like a fudge. And it's delicious. It's spiced with a touch of cardamom. So it's uh -huh. like a, a warm flavor to it. Right. Um, you'll find a lot of pistachio and nut based desserts. Mm -hmm. uh, because India does have a lot of influence from the, you know, Mughal Empire and the Persians and all the mixing that occurred in India so many years ago. Yeah, so a lot of nut based desserts. So we'll have the same thing with pistachio. So instead of cashew flour, it'll be pistachio flour. Uh -huh. um, and we have something called gulab jamun, which is also another very popular dessert. Uh -huh. It is a fried milk fat donut, like a donut hole. Uh -huh. That's deep fried and then soaked in a syrup that has uh, that's been spiced with cinnamon, saffron, cardamom, and rose water. And then you serve it kind of like if you've ever had like the Greek um, honey. Uh huh. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, honey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So very similar to that, uh, but uh -huh. um, very delicious. And we'll have those as well. And you can find those at a lot of Indian restaurants and Indian stores. Well, so that holiday, I guess if I remember, it probably comes in November. Is that right? Is that a November? November. And um, so like what types of traditions do they have for that holiday? Is it like... Yeah do big feasts at the end of each day or what types of traditions do you do? Yeah. So for Diwali, we typically, it, so it's, ba it's a, based on the lunar calendar. So the date changes. So sometimes it's in October, sometimes it's in November. Right. Um, this year is like November 1st, closer to Halloween, but most uh -huh. years it's fairly close to Thanksgiving. So a lot of Indian Americans will mash Diwali and Thanksgiving uh -huh. together. 
together. Yes. Uh, and celebrate it all at once. Well, that's a great idea. Yes. And one of the things that we like to do that's very popular is we decorate the house with lots of light, similar to Christmas. Um, we'll put out candles. So, uh, Diwali is the celebration of light over darkness. Uh huh. And it's also a celebration of be the beginning of New Year's. So you do things that are meant to set you up for the new year. I so see. you decorate your house with light uh -huh. um, to guide good energy and good things to your life and your home. Uh -huh. You also, um, like the tradition that I grew up with, is the house has to be clean. Because uh -huh. we want to start with a clean year. Right. You have to wear brand new clothes. You can't buy clothes that you wore before. They have to be brand new because you're, uh -huh. again, starting a new year. Yeah. Um, you Sweets are a major part. Uh -huh. uh, desserts really... are a major part. Uh -huh. Because you want to start the new year with a sweet taste in your mouth. Something good in your life. Uh -huh. um, so you gift each other desserts. Um, boxes of desserts. Uh -huh. And then we also, fireworks are huge. Uh -huh. So it's to, you know celebrate and have fun so if you ever go to a Diwali festival you'll definitely see lots of lights and uh -huh. tea lights and candles and lots of fireworks and sparklers um and it's just a fun time and usually there's like a big dinner with your family and I grew up being growing growing up in New Jersey obviously it's not the same way they celebrate in India uh -huh. but we would like you know go house to house visit the temple in the morning uh -huh. um, our dinners were not typically Indian food <laughs> <laughs> which sounds it was always like an Indian ish so like our favorite was like I remember growing up and having eggplant lasagna at like my aunt's house every uh -huh. year for Diwali <laughs> so we've taken in a lot of foods and tradition right. from what's around us and right. incorporated exactly. into our fusion fusion cuisine yes yeah. <laughs> That's great. I love it. That's great. Very, very interesting. Sounds like a really, really neat holiday. I'll have to get into uh, celebrating it next year when it comes around. Yes. As I said, I started hearing so much about it now. So um, sounds like a great holiday. So we're almost out of time, but tell people yeah. where um, they can find your book again. And it's called Daisy Bakes. How do we spell yes. Daisy? It's D-E-S-I okay. Bakes. Okay. And you can find it on Amazon, Target, Barnes and Nobles. I highly recommend checking out your local bookstore right. um, and seeing if they have it. And I have lots of amazing recipes like a tender coconut cream pie, my right. carrot um, blondies that I mentioned earlier. Yes. And just lots of desserts that are reminiscent and nostalgic for the Desi slash Indian American community, but also uh -huh. something new for the non-Indian community that people might enjoy. Oh, definitely. As I said, I think it's a great book for people to check out, it's, even if you're a home cook and you've never done any of these types of desserts. It sounds like a lot of them may be just easy enough for somebody to pick up and an interesting way to, uh, you know, make some interesting desserts that are delicious, too. That's great. Um, I'll try and uh, make sure we put um, the name of your book on on uh, the blog for the Maria Liberati mm -hmm. show dot com as well, so people can find it. Great, well, much success, and uh, you. hopefully you'll come back when you do your next book. Sounds like you're probably getting ready to do another one, also. Yes, I'm hoping to do more. <laughs> great, great, that's great. Yes, well, we look forward to seeing you in the near future. Thanks, Hattel. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Discover the timeless secrets of Italian cuisine with the Basic Art of Italian Cooking series by Maria Liberati. That's me. From fragrant basil to silky olive oil, each page is a culinary masterpiece. Taste the passion, embrace the tradition, and create your own masterpieces in the kitchen with my Gourmand World award-winning book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking. Buon appetito! And you can find the books on Amazon.com, Kindle, on MariaLiberati.com, and on the publisher's website, Art of Living Prima media.com and today uh, I have Ashley Shuring here with us again she's uh, become a regular and uh, her blog is called confessions of a grocery addict and she helps us save money on uh, food and and just with 
different tips on what we can do to uh, keep getting some great food, but uh, save money while doing that. So Ashley, thanks so much for being here again. Thanks for having me again, Maria. It's always a pleasure. Yes. Yeah, so Thanksgiving is almost here as we were talking about, and I know you were bringing in some uh, tips for hosting, I guess, for hosting a dinner. Absolutely. Yeah. I've, um, I've hosted Thanksgiving dinners since I was about 18. So oh, wow. <laughs> I've had a lot of experience. Yes, definitely. Uh, uh, so one of my first things is, um, especially if you've got a big, a big group, we're, we're the family that always brings in all the waifs and strays and people who don't have a place, yes, to, go. place to go. Um, and so if you're hosting for something like that, um, I always recommend that you make it at least an optional potluck you know everybody uh -huh. doesn't have to contribute but um sharing some of the burden and it's like the super bowl of cooking so everybody <laughs> kind of wants to show off what they're yes. good at <laughs> yes, exactly. So what I like to do is go on Google and create a shared sign-up sheet and then like email it to everybody and you can leave it vague with, you know, either side or dessert and let your guests fill in what they're bringing. Uh -huh. Or you can be super specific, like bring green beans or mashed potatoes, depending on how your group works. Some people like more creative leeway, others want direction. So right. just know your people. Yes, exactly. Um, and I also like to include some knowledge food options for people who aren't really into cooking or who right. don't have the time. So That's wine true. is always a good thing. Yes. Uh, and sundries. It's such a silly thing, but you know, have somebody bring a roll of paper towels or bring some extra toilet paper, like all of these things that kind of help uh, keep the wheels turning as you have extra people in your house. That's that's a great idea. That's definitely a great idea because you're absolutely right. Not everybody likes to cook and um, that's a, a great way that they can contribute without having to cook. So that's a great idea also, yes. And if you are somebody who wants to just treat your whole crew and do the whole thing yourself, remember that meat's gonna be the most expensive item. Uh -huh. So offer lots of other things to fill your guests up. I like to start with like a soup. Um, mm -hmm. And if you have a bunch of people use mugs because you know, then you don't have to deal with bowls. Exactly. But Mugs of soup will help fill their tummies, make yes. sure there's plenty of appetizers, plenty of sides. Uh -huh. um, and then also, I think trying to remember that you can do some non-traditional items. Like, for example, um, I've started making peanut pie instead of pecan pie during Thanksgiving because peanuts go. are way cheaper and it's oh, delicious. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then you can also do some batch cocktails like making a sangria or a punch, which will help stretch your bar a little bit further. Uh huh. And then finally, just remember that you can shop around. So like Aldi is doing Thanksgiving for $50. Walmart usually does something sort of similar. Right. And then Remember that Turkey is going to be the loss leader. So a lot of times um, grocery stores will actually lose money on selling the cheapest turkeys. Uh huh. And then they make up their margins by having everything else be more expensive. Else. So uh -huh. just kind of like find the places where you're going to find the cheapest stuff and you can turn to the websites or, you know, their apps, reading um, store circulars and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And then frozen turkey is often cheaper than fresh just remember you've got to give it plenty of time to defrost and defrost. make sure there's time to brine it <laughs> yes definitely and there are a, i don't know if if the supermarkets do this everywhere in the u.s but i know there are a lot of supermarkets that you earn points from shopping and at thanksgiving time they will give you a free turkey if you amass a certain amount of points so that is amazing i yes. have never <laughs> oh no so yes there is um actually in pennsylvania we have a a well i don't want to mention names but there are a, actually there are a couple of chains that we have that do that the supermarkets do that i don't know if it's just like a pennsylvania thing or but they actually are chains that are all around the country so i don't know if it is but yeah there are are some chains that do that so you know look in your the sale fly your flyers like weekly flyers um and uh you might you know actually a lot of the supermarkets are doing that to be in competition and some of those big box places you know like the the membership big box places are doing something like that too so 
that's always a good way to save money because then you just you know you can buy all the other stuff and you get your points and then you get a free turkey too that's so, awesome yeah so that's a good good thing to do also so did you hear i i was just uh i had a lot of appointments today running around in my car listening to some talk shows on the radio and they were talking about this this thing that people are doing they're calling it a snacks giving where they're just having a dinner with lots of snacks because things have gotten so expensive have you heard about that i have not heard about that but i love snack dinner we yes. we do that at our house at least uh -huh. once a, at least once a week um, exactly just cleaning out the fridge but that makes a lot of sense to me yeah they said so people are doing like they're just putting together all these different snacks and uh i guess you know appetizers and a whole bunch of appetizers i mean you're absolutely right i've done that a lot of times for dinner when especially if i don't have a lot of time and i don't really want anything really heavy i'll just have just graze kind of on snacks so i guess it's another another way to do thanksgiving a snacks giving and uh just i think that's a really cute idea too and yeah. you know as yeah. long as people are getting their tummies filled it doesn't really matter exactly <laughs> it doesn't really matter and it you know it's a, a big kind of get together and you're just having all these different snacks and hey you can even probably even theme them you could have something with turkey or cranberries or pumpkin or whatever in it too so uh yeah absolutely that's a great idea yeah <laughs> so what uh, what are you doing for thanksgiving um, well, I actually, I, my family, we all kind of do a little bit, like you said, we kind of all um, bring something to the table. So luckily I don't have to do the turkey. So <laughs> I usually <laughs> do a cram, my cranberries, I do the special cranberry stuff and mm. a couple of um, side things too. So, um, so yeah, that's what, that's what I usually will will do for thanksgiving so yeah luckily i don't have the whole the whole dinner on me so that's a good thing <laughs> that is a good thing <laughs> yes definitely definitely so i like to make um different like pumpkin pie and the cranberries and you know some of that stuff and of course i love i love veggies so it's usually like sauteed spinach with um olive oil and garlic you know i'll do something like that which is really good and i do that with mushrooms too which are really good too yum yeah so they're all good yes <laughs> <laughs> so how about you are you hosting a thanksgiving dinner yeah so um i normally host my husband's family here in nashville um but this year for the first year in 10 years i'm going home to california so my brothers and i will be cooking for the whole family but we'll do that on sunday and uh -huh. thursday it's just going to be like our little nuclear group. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. So you get to go back to California. Yeah. Great. See All family. Fun. Yeah, definitely. That's great. All right. Well, so I know next month you're coming back with some tips for Christmas, right? Heck yeah, I'll be here. <laughs> great. I will too. So Ashley, thank you so much for being here. Confessions of a Grocery Addict. You can uh, look for Ashley online. Look at her blog. She has a lot more tips on on uh saving money and just some really creative ideas also and uh she will be here next week and then i probably will have some of this info on on the blog for the for the podcast the marie liberati show.com awesome. thanks ashley thanks so much for being here thank you for having me join me on a mouth-watering journey through Italy with my Gourmand World award-winning book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, which brings you authentic recipes, heartwarming stories, and a dash of Mediterranean magic. Whether you're a seasoned chef or a beginner, these books will awaken your inner food artist. Get ready to say ciao to delicious adventures. And you can find the Gourmand World award-winning book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, at Amazon.com on Kindle and on MariaLiberati.com and the publisher's website, Art of Living, PrimaMedia.com.
And my special guest today is Alina Servina, and she's from, well, her social media handle is Go Where You Please. She's an expert in Gen Z travel, and you know, the holidays are here, and holiday travel can be so stressful. So I've invited her on to give us some tips on how to make it less stressful. Alina, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and to talk about holiday travel. Uh this is something I do every year around Thanksgiving and Christmas those happen Uh to be my big trips and I do them sometimes within the U.S. other times international ones last year my boyfriend and I decided to go on a 10-day trip all the way from New York to Thailand and back which is Uh really quick but we were able to make it go off without a hitch Uh and I think it's all thanks to the systems that I now have in place from Uh just traveling so much. So I'm really happy to share the tips that I have on this. Wow. Yes. So you went from New York to Thailand during the holidays. Wow. Wow. (laughs) That was great. Yes. I've traveled to Europe during the holidays. So I know um, sometimes it can be stressful, but, but anyway, that's really a lot, you know, definitely a lot farther. So tell us some, you know, some tips on traveling, like, are there any special days that you should think of traveling on instead of the holiday day or like a couple days before or you know what yeah I mean I think it definitely varies with people's schedule it really Mm -hmm. just depends I'm actually usually flying out at what people deem to be the least convenient time just because I'm trying to maximize my travel but with that being said I make sure to give us enough time between any layovers, any transitions you have to make. Just Uh having that buffer point, I feel like is the most helpful thing to plan for, especially for connections. You just never know when a delay might come up or a cancellation. So I think for just anticipating things like that, you're in a much better spot because you can at least have some time to recover as opposed to things being back to back. So that's right. what I always try to have in our itinerary when I'm planning the trip. That's a that's a good idea. Definitely. A li- I like the way you said, like a buffer type of thing. And, you know, you're in the airport. There's usually lots of little stores around and eating places you can kind of, and it's the holidays. So just kind of have fun if there's I've, I've experienced everything, cancellations and having to sleep at Air Force during the holidays and all that, but yeah, you can make it work out. So, um, any other, any other tips on, uh, making it less stressful? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you were talking about, you know, the airport and having to sit there sometimes. Yes. I do not, you know, I'm, I'm not working with any specific travel credit card, but Uh I feel like my travel lifestyle really became a lot more elevated and relaxed Uh once I did get a travel credit card because some of my cards will cover delays, lost bags, um, just unforeseen circumstances. And Uh knowing that I'm covered by my card Uh gives so much peace of mind. There's been times where, you know, that delay does happen. And at least I know that I can find the nearest hotel where I will feel safe at because sometimes I do travel solo as well. And that's really important for me as a solo female traveler to find a place I actually actually feel safe staying at and then knowing that my travel credit card will then approve that claim later as Uh long as it's obviously within the terms and stuff you know you have to make sure to know those things when you make those decisions but I do think having that system helps me be more prepared and feel a lot more relaxed Uh because I know you know even if my bag got lost if my card is going to reimburse me for some clothes that already makes me feel so much better in Uh a stressful situation (laughs) Yes, exactly. That's a great idea to get a travel a travel credit card. And um, you're absolutely right. Definitely. That sounds like that definitely helps with any unforeseen things also. Definitely. And then and, also with travel uh-huh. credit cards, you also sometimes have lounge access. And, you know, some of them- I was them just going to talk about that. Yeah, ahead, yes. some might give you a pass or two. Others give you a full membership. But uh-huh. I do think having those in the case of a delay also really helps. I've also had 
certain lounge staff be able to help me directly as opposed to having to wait in like the super long lines. I mean, you know, each airline operates slightly differently, but Uh if it is a lounge of the airline, especially, then you might be able to weigh into using that perk as well. So, Uh you know, just doing your research. And then again, I, I can't believe I traveled that long without lounges, you know, when you do 50 flights a year at the least, the lounges really add up very quick. They they do, they do. I know I had traveled without them and then with having access to them, it does it does really help, especially if you if you get delays and and or cancellations and things like that um, as well. Any um, specific places maybe to avoid or for, you know, holiday travel or? I think it's all about how you plan, honestly. Uh-huh. Obviously, certain destinations do tend to have more of a crowd during, you know, holiday travel. A lot of people like to get away somewhere warm. That means the resort resorts tend to be close to capacity but you know it's all about your preference if you're someone that is looking to be off the grid obviously that's something for you to consider but I know other people and I know my family I have a younger brother they love knowing that if we'll come to a resort there'll be other kids there I'm Uh a little bit too old to entertain him fully at this point Uh we have a big age gap so I do think it really just depends on your personal preference And, you know, just talk to the people that you're traveling as well. Make sure that all of your needs and wants are being met so that no arguments or disagreements arise (laughs) once you're there. Because, you know, you can't help that all the robots tend to be more crowded when it's cold. It's not a surprise. I hate the cold myself. So I'm definitely one of those people that usually try to get away. So yes, to to a warm spot. What about traveling? Because I've done this sometimes to uh, actually sometimes I had gotten better deals if I travel on a holiday. So like, um, you know, traveling on Christmas Day or something like that. What about traveling on the actual day? That's, you know, obviously, then you're missing some of that day. But you know, there may be some other perks within that. No, that's a great point. I actually just booked a trip for my boyfriend and I to Colombia for the Christmas like break between the 24th and the 31st. So we are literally traveling Christmas Eve. And that is actually why we ended up booking the trip Uh is it was a points redemption. Mm -hmm. So I was able to find like a 10,000 point light to Cartagena, Colombia. Uh And it's only available on the 24th. So if you go a day later, a day earlier, it was jumping all the way up. But Uh this one was super low. So we were able to take advantage of that low price, which was great. But I think the big consideration is it's great that you're able to save on the flight. Right. But the hotels might have a different idea in mind. So yes, that's you true. Know, those prices still tend to stay pretty high. So it really just depends if you're looking to save and what areas you're looking to save in. Exactly. We do a lot of points and miles travel. So uh-huh. thankfully, we were able to get our hotel fully on points as well. So uh-huh. for us, it's a pretty affordable trip, I would say, overall. Oh, but I cool. understand that, you know, that's not for everyone. So, right. But that's a great that's idea. True. The idea of the points too, because everyone doesn't always take advantage of that. So be really aware of, you know, points that you can get using certain credit cards and really make good use of, of the points. Cause I know so many people that do use them for hotel stays and, you know, flights and just so many things. So points are really important, but yes, I've done that. I flew on like different holiday days and um, um, gotten some really great deals if I'm willing, you know, if I was willing to do that. So, and and sometimes it's less crowded because not a lot of people want, right? (laughs) Not a lot of people want to travel on Christmas day or Christmas Eve. So sometimes you you get less crowds also. So that's great. Any other um, parting tips for our audience? We're almost out of time. Any other tips? I would just say create a Google Doc to keep track of your itinerary and make sure you share that with your direct family as well. I Uh think it's super helpful for everyone to have an idea of where you'll be staying, what your flights are, 
it'll be good for your reference as well, especially if you're doing a lot of activities. I love just pulling up my doc and knowing exactly what I have happening. Uh -huh. And then my family's not worried about me either, which again, as someone that does go solo a fair amount, safety is a big concern. Definitely. So I love that I could just share that with them. And then not only do I have peace of mind, but they get the peace of they mind. They get the too. peace of mind too. That's great. That's a great idea. Yes, because you could share that with your family and friends. Everybody can kind of check in and see where you're at too. That's great. All great tips. So Alina, it's go where you please on Instagram. Yes. Is that correct? And TikTok. Okay. I I do post on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube as well now. Okay. So. Oh, okay. That's great. So yes. And we'll put that on the blog for the MariaLiberatiShow.com. We'll put that at go where you please. So people know where to find you. Thank you so much for sharing tips and, and uh, hopefully we'll have you back in the near future for some more travel tips. Awesome. I'd love to be back. And it was yeah. Great talking with you tonight. You too. Thanks so much, Alina. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Marie Liberati show this week. And as always, thanks to my producer, Britton Roselle, and this week's special guests. And as always, you can find me at marialiberati.com, on Instagram at Maria Liberati, on Facebook at Chef Maria Liberati, on Pinterest at Maria Liberati, on TikTok at Maria Liberati. And let's see, on YouTube, it's the Maria Liberati show channel on Pinterest, it's Maria Liberati. On LinkedIn, it's M Liberati. On Twitter or X, it's Maria Liberati. And you can find my Gourmand World award-winning book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, at marialiberati.com. On the publisher's website, artoflivingprimamedia.com on Amazon and Kindle and Barnes and Noble and really anywhere books are sold. And you can also find video of some of my cooking shows on Vimeo. That's V-I-M-E-O.com. If you just look for Vimeo.com slash Maria Liberati. And here are some more products that will be in this week's holiday guide. Again, I've been researching products for gifts for the holidays things that make really nice, unique gifts for the holidays or products that are a great addition to your holiday table. Seal Vax is a great product for anyone that's a foodie and uh, anyone that loves their home kitchen. So check out Seal Vax and Sniff and Scent is a great fun toy. Again, for your fur baby, it, it's something that makes playtime really fun so check out sniff and scent and meow tastic makes a, an adorable weighted animal pillow which is a great gift for kids so check out this week's products on the holiday guide it's the holiday guide number nine and stay tuned for next week's uh, picks also but you can also check out all of the holiday guides so far there's eight of them and number nine will be up this week also so check them out and until next week peace love and pasta